Do I pray for everyone? Welcome to Coffee with Pastor B. What if I were the one to tell you that the fight's already been won? Well, I think your day's about to get better. What if I were the one to tell you that the work's already been done? It's not good news, it's the best news ever. That's a great question to ask today, and our question comes out of 2 Timothy and verse 1. It says this, First of all, then, I urge that entreaties and prayers, petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men. It goes on to say that we need to pray for everyone, for those that are in authority, uh, for those that we may not like. You know, um, it's hard to pray for people, especially when we're having struggles with them, especially when we may not like them too much. You know, I'll read you something out of uh, a, a book I picked up recently. It's a, it's uh, called the Simplified Cowboy Version um, of Scripture. It's a great paraphrase, kind of like the message, only it's for cowboys. It's got cowboy language in it, and you know what? I love cowboy stuff, so I got it. I think it's one of the best uh, uh, paraphrases of Scripture uh, that I have come into contact with yet. But that's just my plug for the simple cow, uh, Simplified Cowboy Version. But I want to read what it says here because it takes it to a different level. And I love what it says here because it takes us to a place where our hearts are challenged. It says this, never give up praying for everyone, not just those you like. Only God can work a man over from the inside out. Be thankful that he never rests. We have to continue to pray for folks. We can't ever stop praying for folks, especially people we don't like. You know, the Bible tells us that we're to pray for our enemies and, and, and reach out to those who persecute you. We're not to treat our enemies with disdain and ugliness, but we're to pray for them. We're to lift them up. We're not to let them take advantage. We're not to let them come in and, and, and cause harm, but we are to pray for them. We're to pray that God would would somehow put something in their lives that they would come to know the love of Jesus Christ, that they would repent of those things that are making us not like them so much. Um, so we got to pray for everybody, and that can be really difficult in our lives especially for those who have hurt us the most, for those cuts that hit the deepest. But I guarantee this, when you're praying for people, especially those who hurt you, there's something that changes within us. There's a perception that changes within us. There's a heart that within us that softens as we pray, even for those who have hurt us the worst. Even for those who have cut the deepest, our perception and, and, and our lives change because as we're praying, we're lifting it up to God. What I like to say, I like to lift it up or I like to roll it up to God because I don't want to bear that weight. Jesus didn't say, take on my weight, which is heavy. He says, take on my burden, which is light. He's saying, stop trying to bear these things that don't belong to you. God says, those who hurt my children are actually hurting me. He takes and bears that responsibility for us. We don't have to bear it alone. We can pray for those folks. We can pray for forgiveness. We can pray for repentance. We can pray that God puts something in their lives that causes them to come to Him, to come to the, His love, to come to His uh, repentance, that they may turn away from the wickedness that caused us such pain. And we become like Jesus, who on the very cross said, Forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. He prayed. He prayed for his enemies. He prayed for those pounding in the nails. He prayed for the mockers in the crowd. He prayed for those that were dividing his clothes. He prayed for everyone, especially his enemies, that he would one day uh, get them to repent and come to him, to come to his gift of salvation, that their hearts would be changed. You know, there's a saying that hurt people hurt people. Oftentimes when we're praying for somebody, maybe we're praying for the hurt in their lives to ease, that there may be space for Jesus to enter and fundamentally change the person they are. Because I truly believe that's possible, and I truly believe that that's the power of prayer. It's twofold. It changes my perspective about other people, realizing that all people are children of God. And the second thing is, it opens up the opportunity for Jesus to enter in, that they would be fundamentally changed. 
so just like us, that they could look a little more like Jesus and a little less like the world. Thanks for joining me for just a sip of coffee this afternoon and a look at the Word. God bless y'all.